Doctor. I'm a time lord. I'm from the planet Gallifrey in the constellation of Castelbrus. I hope the ears are a bit less conspicuous this time. You might be a doctor, but I am. I'm a doctor. That's probably not the one you expect. Absolutely fantastic. All of time and space, everything that ever happened or ever will. Where do you want to start? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Big On the Inside of New Who. Doctor Who Watched On Podcast. Uh, I'm Tim Sexby. Hello. And with me, as always, is a man who I once saw eat a full baguette in Spain. It is Harry Murdoch. Hello, Harry. How do you do? You followed me to Spain? I did. And I was deeply horrified by the fact that you used a knife and fork to eat the baguette, but didn't use butter. Strange boy. Um, Listen, what happens between me and a baguette is strictly between me and the baguette, okay? <laughs> It's okay, not for okay. you, Tim. <laughs> uh, we're here to sort of, um, we're in a mid-season, so, well, not in a mid-season break, but we're between two seasons of Series 3 and Series 4. Um, Voyager to Dan will be coming up shortly, but before that, we're going to uh, talk about the children. Well, what are we going to talk about, Harry? We're going to talk about the Children in Need Doctor Who special, Time Crash, by Stephen Moffat. Yeah, I was surprised that this was a Moffat thing. I thought Davis would have wanted to have uh, been the one to bring back um, classic Doctors. You know, that's kind of a big... You know, this is the first time we've had classic Doctors meet new Doctors, so you would have thought that the showrunner would have really wanted to do that. But, you know, it's a testament to Roffit, Roffitt's, to Moffat's writing that um, Russell, you know, gr- lets him do stuff like this. Yeah, I guess another part of it is that obviously Moffat has kind of quite, quite well, pretty um, undeniable experience in this kind of field. Obviously, he wrote the uh, comic relief special Curse of Fatal Death yeah. before the revival. So kind of writing these short form Doctor Who comedy things for charity events is a very specific niche. Yeah. Moffat has experience in that niche. I think when we get to Smith's era as well, there is a lot of mini episodes and online specials and stuff like that, which he wrote and stuff. So maybe when we get over to Matt Smith's tenure, we'll be able to look at them a little more. But yeah, so this episode is the very, I'll call it an episode, but it's mainly a mini episode. It's the first time that we had um, a multi-doctor episode for New Who. And um, it came around that the BBC were asked, or Russell was asked to provide a short thing for uh, children in need, and they were stuck for ideas. And apparently um, Russell just said, why don't we just do a multi-doctor episode, which is a very strange way to go about it. But um, what did you think? What did you think to it, Harry? I thought the episode was a lot of fun. Um, Really, it's just this weird anomaly, as you said, the fact that in all of Russell's era, this is the only form of any kind of multi-doctor story we received mm. i mean for what it is it's a lot of fun i think that davison is having a really great time the way he plays off tenant is really entertaining and the dialogue that moffat writes between the two of them you know it, it's clear he knows how to write two doctors playing off one another in a very ent- entertaining way yeah it's just strange that this is all we got during russell's tenure yeah um d- I think when I watched this, I knew who all the classic doctors were, and I could name them in order, and I could do all that. But I don't think I'd ever... I'd, I know I had never watched a classic episode by this point. So in some ways, this might be the same for you, that this was my first sort of venture into classic Who, and this is my first time seeing a classic doctor sort of brought to life, sort almost. And I think it works really well. And from when I have watched Davison episodes, and you might not be able to... might not be the same, but... From when I've watched Davison's episodes, I don't feel like there's a difference between the two um, personas anymore. They, there's the one we get in Time Crash and the one we get in Black Orchard, for example. They're the same character. I don't feel like he's playing it differently. I'm not watching it going, oh, it's almost the Fifth Doctor. I watch it and go, oh yeah, that's him. I like you said, I can't really speak. I've not watched any uh, Fifth Doctor stories yet. Yeah. Um, but no, I am inclined to. I mean, I'll take your word for it. I will say that um, Davison, I do like the energy that he brings to the role. And you, you can kind of believe, despite the fact that he's clearly aged since doing Classic Who, and they acknowledge that, in, which I, what I think is a very clever kind of justification for it in the episode. 
He yeah. doesn't impede his performance by any means. You know, he's still full of energy. He's still going around. He's very much matching Tennant. Yeah, I think they say they shortened out the time differentials, which I think is just a nice throwaway line that means nothing, but also explains itself very well. And I think if they want to do classic Doctors again, they can just say that line again and people will be happy with it. I honestly wouldn't mind if they brought back Tom Baker again or, you know, McCoy or McGann or, you know, anybody, Baker, uh, Colin Baker as well, and just use that line. That is something I was kind of wondering watching this episode. You mentioned other classic doctors. Um, of all the classic two doctors, why is it that they brought back Davison specifically? I'm not sure. Something I think that- I saw in, a, in the confidential, Moffat said that um, he knew that Davison was a fan of the new show. And I think his kids watched it. So I think he was kind of excited to... I think he sort of knew he would say yes. Rather, I think if he had asked... Tom Baker, it would have been a uh, maybe not so sure sort of thing. And then Colin Baker, yes, but he's maybe not as well known as Peter Davison. So I think they almost filtered it out to who is the biggest name almost. And Paul McGann was still quite recent. Uh, I feel like Peter Davison was probably the one that they wanted. Yeah, that's true. And I guess also, if you were to get Tom Baker, you'd probably want to do a bit more with him than just a comic relief special. You want something a bit more momentous, which we uh, get yeah, down 100%, on. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's a big name. So, yeah, definitely. Um, let's talk about the interaction between the two Doctors. That's really well done, I feel. Um, mm-hmm. Because David Taylor is just fanboying his way through all of this in character, and I also feel slightly out of character as well. In the confidential, he's saying, I think he says, if I could show this to my seven-year-old self, he'd melt. Um <laughs> So I think that's um, I think that they they do it really well, and even though it's so short, it's really well done. Mm, absolutely, I mean it's kind of the line he says at the end. He kind of says like, "You were my doctor." Is that is that true? Did is Davison the main doctor that David grew up with? No, I think it's uh, Tom Baker is David Tennant's doctor. But I think that line is more in reference to what Doctor David Tennant's doctor is mostly inspired by. Do you think so? I mean, obviously, bring up the stuff about the sand shoes and all that. Yeah. And so, and the glasses, which I think is was very good to kind of linking by Moffat. I think that was cool for him to pick up on that stuff. Yeah. I mean, I mean now Peter Davison probably is David Tennant's doctor just because of very strange circumstances that have come in his life. But um, a I, little I, touch, I don't know if you picked on it, but a little touch in this is when Peter Davison's with the TARDIS and he's talking, he's doing all his doctory speeches and stuff, they play, um, I'm not sure if it is classic Who music, but it's very much in the vein of classic Who music in the background. So sort of whenever he's like interacting with the TARDIS, the music changes and you get this kind of 1980s sort of, well, 1970s, 1980s sort of uh, throwback music. I didn't pick up on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing I did kind of notice generally is that if you compare this to, um, what was the Children Need special just before Christmas Invasion? Born Again. What was that one called? Born Again. Yeah. The production values on this compared to Born Again, you can tell they had a lot more time for this. You can yeah. tell kind of like all the music is there, the sound effects are there, kind of the, the lighting's much better, they're using much more interesting camera angles. Yeah, because it was clear that This was not just kind of... Go on, sorry. I just to say, it's clear this isn't just some kind of throwaway last minute thing yeah. for children need. It's clear this is something that had a similar amount of time and effort put into it that the regular show has. Yeah. I liked I'm uh, sorry, there was a there was Born Again, which was between series one and series two, but then there wasn't anything, if I remember rightly, between series two and series three. But between series three um, and series four we had time crash. So that's quite interesting to sort of see how its popularity sort of built. And one thing I noticed in this is this is, I, I'm going to say this is the most 10th Doctory 10th Doctor that we've had so far is in this one special. In what regard? He's just like full on going clowning and nuts and big grins and the way he's speaking and rattling off, rattling off lines. I think I might have some wrote down actually. But uh, check out this burn strip to Doctor because one day you're going to be shaking it. Uh <laughs> oh, what he's going on about being able to fix the tires with a kettle and some string. Um, 
I just think there's some really good dialogue, and, and I wish that we could have perhaps seen more Moffat writing for the Tenth Doctor. I know we do get it in this forthcoming series, Series Four, but uh, I feel like the way the Tenth Doctor is characterised in this is really great. Yeah, I think that's part of it is that when you say the most Tenth Doctor feeling Tenth Doctor, perhaps the reason it feels that way is obviously kind of growing up with the Tenth Doctor as kids. Me, definitely the things that I remember and that stuck with me for Tenth Doctor were the things that appealed to me as a child, kind of how goofy he was, how fast talking, the big grins, yeah. all that stuff. And I guess for a children who need comic relief special or something much lighter, it only makes sense to lean into that aspect of his character rather than, you know, the angsty, yeah. intense, time world victorious stuff. Yeah. It'd be a bit weird if he was getting all mopey at yeah. a charity event. What did you think to the mention of Linda? That gets a reappearance uh, from Love and Monsters. I'm very, I'm very, very glad that that <laughs> was brought up. And it's an interesting bit of expansion for Linda that they kind of... I mean, there was... Was a reference to the fact that there was more than one Doctor in Linda? Um, I feel like there might have been a line somewhere. There might have been, yeah. I'm not 100% sure. It's got this cool idea that Linda is something that the Doctor has just always had knew about and kind of bumped into every now and again. It's kind of, I like it. I like it. I think it's cute. Yeah. Um, I've got a little bit of trivia here about this little um, special. But before we go into that, do you have anything else that we haven't spoken about that you particularly enjoyed? Um, just one thing that kind of, a joke that I think went over my head when watching before, which is that, when they talk about the master and he's asked and Davidson asks Tennant if he steals a beard, he says, No, well, a wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that... Does he still have that rubbish beard? <laughs> it's great. Like, it's, like, it's somewhat meta. I feel you couldn't get away with that in an actual episode, but because it's children, need, you know, you can sort of. Uh... Yeah. But, but that, that, that reference there, it's, um, you know, the whole reference to. Uh, men having a wife as a beard is an insinuation of, you know? Nope. Do you not know this one? Nope. Like, like, like sometimes people, you hear the phrase, I don't know how common it is now compared to back in 2007, but sometimes it's said that, um, I don't know the phrase that like, that sometimes gay men have, that you, Oh, uh, yeah, I'm looking at it here. Beard is an American podcast. slang term describing a person who is used, knowingly or unknowingly, as a date romantic partner. I had no idea. Well done on picking that up. <laughs> did, you, did you not know about that phrase? No, I never heard that. <laughs> I just thought it was an interesting thing for Moffat to put in. That kind Moffat's of. Um... On the inside. We educate and entertain. <laughs> yeah, so is that Moffat? saying that the master is homosexual or what is that <laughs> i don't know i feel like maybe i don't know i'm inclined to say that he maybe knew what he was writing in but at the same time it also could be just a great coincidence i don't know, I, I feel like my father knew what he was saying with that yeah, line. It does, yeah. <laughs> i feel like he probably knew um let me skip some in quickly um the jacket that Peter Davison wears is not the, the none of the costume that Davison's wearing is exactly this is is the original. So the jacket is a replica from the Blackpool Museum, which is no longer there. The trousers are in fact when they got the trousers also from the Blackpool Museum, they had a V, like an extra bit of material in a V shape sewn into the back. That they were actually the trousers that Colin Baker wore once Peter Davison regenerated as Colin Baker. So they had to add a little bit of extra material to fit um, Mr. Colin Baker. Um, it's a brand new jumper and a brand new hat. And uh, But the ribbon is the, I think, actually, no, the ribbon might be the same one from the uh, uh, original hat from the TV series. So there you go. And I believe it's a new piece of celery as well. <laughs> no, they, they got the old, um, they got the old rotten bit of celery from the original show and they kind of, they airbrushed it. Yeah. Um, all in all, I really enjoyed this. I like the idea that this kind of stuff might happen more often than we, we actually see, just the Doctor bumping into random versions of himself or herself now. Um, I just kind of them moving on with their life. 
Actually, do you consider this canon? Because obviously, um, the last of Time Lords ends, and then the next thing we see in that episode is immediately jumped to Titanic. Yeah. Because this is edited in a way to insinuate it's something that happens in between those. Mm. Do you place this within the canon, or do you not? Yes, but I can also understand if they if they wrote it out. But I feel like it's commonly known that this special happened, so I feel like people accept it as canon. That said, Big Finish are uh, doing a 10th Doctor meets the 5th Doctor audio story, uh, audio drama later this year, so it'll be interesting to see if they reference it. Um, if they do, therefore, it's canon within Big Finish, but then there's the debate of is Big Finish canon within the television series. But because it happened on screen and we saw it, I would be inclined to say that... Uh, it is canon because I w- I've always classed Born Again as being something that was canon and other Doctor Who specials also being canon. So I don't know, perhaps. Does that include the one from like the 80s where they crossed over with EastEnders? Yes, the very same. Can you come and sit a long time? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is your favourite Doctor Who um, charity thing? Leave it in the comments below and we might ignore it. Uh, um, but come again soon. Come again soon. Do do come back. Do subscribe because we're going to be doing Voyage of the Dam very shortly. In fact, we're going to record it straight after this. So come back for that. And uh, I'll say goodbye. Bye, everybody. Harry, do you want to say anything at all? Bye bye. Bye bye. Make sure you subscribe to the official Bigger on the Inside podcast.